Well, good morning, everyone. I'm glad that you could make it. My name is Cherish, and I'll be hosting this webinar. I have Dave the Second with me today. Dave has spent lots of time developing Clip to make it um, the software that you all use today. And an interesting fact about him is that he has a half-acre garden, much larger than most people, and that's because he married someone who grew up with a multi-acre garden. I don't remember how many acres that was. Um, so I'm not sure how much gardening Dave actually does himself, but he gets lots of, lots of fresh food during the summer. Today's topic is contracts. Dave will be going over everything that has to do with entering a contract and show you the best way to set clip ups so that you can start 2014 season right. Next week we'll be going over the last key to maximum profit with minimal management, which is creating systems. And we'll have some great tips in there of how you can use some of the products we've already given to you. And just general business principles we've seen do wonders to Clip Lawn Care and many of our thousands of customers. And I think that's everything that I have for now, so we can go ahead and get started. So uh, today basically what we'd like to do is go over how to enter in a contract and some different tools that you can use to make sure that people in your office are entering in contracts correctly into uh, Clip. So um, you know we all we all do our contracts, we send them out, we get them back, and then um, inevitably there's the people in the office end up entering something wrong or a customer isn't clear about what they actually wanted on the contract on the uh, estimate that we sent them and then something gets mixed up so um, some of the stuff that we're going to go over today is just uh, best practices how you should set things up inside of clip um, and different situations. I'll show you some examples of what uh, Clip Lawn Care does, some of their systems, and then some new features also in Clip um, that will help you make sure that your data is accurate. So we have a saying, I guess, in uh, programming that says uh, garbage in, garbage out. So make sure that your information is good so that your guys are doing the jobs when they're supposed to and the customer's happy and then the customer's paying you and paying you on time. So <clears throat> that's basically what we're going to be covering today. Um, as I said, I'll use some of the Clip Lawn Care contracts as examples, and we'll make sure to include those in the resources at the end of the webinar. So if you want to steal some stuff from there, that's fine. We don't mind. Um, and with that, let's get started. If you have any questions along the way, just go ahead and type them into the questions bar. Um, we've got Cherish and Steven both uh, helping us out with answering questions today. And um, so, good team. All right, so Clip has tools to make data better. Um, basically, it's important that we, that we make sure people enter in information correctly. Um, uh, I kind of went over that already. Um, one thing that you can use inside of Clip is you can use color coding. So Clip Lawn Care actually uses this quite a bit. This is a um, this has got some of their their examples, I guess, inside of it. So if you go to a customer list, we have certain things that we want to make sure are filled out for every customer. So the property name, we've got it in teal, so that um, the office people know. Okay, we need to have a property name. We need an address. We need a city, state, zip. When they're on the phone with the customer, they can see all these things are colored. They know to make sure that they get that information. Um, you can you can create your own Dave, system. Can we use this? Mm -hmm. um, can we use this color coding feature on any of the um, pages in the file maintenance? Um, it works on the main customer screen. It works on the jobs jobs tab. So underneath jobs job details, and also underneath the uh, programs tab too. So all three of those places. Um, one trick that people don't, don't understand with this is um, this is the button that you use. This change the back color of the fields button, and you just click on the field that you want to change and then choose a color. Some people will use like green, red, and yellow. So green means always enter this. Yellow means sometimes, and red means we don't need to enter it. Um, but as long as you make sure that it's clear in your in your process manuals, then uh, then that'll work fine. 
So since nobody uses fax anymore, and I and we didn't rename that to a different name, we'll leave it white. So people know that stuff in white you don't really need to worry about for clip lawn care. Anything in teal needs to be filled out. Um, you you do need to be logged in as the main administrator. You don't want your office staff going in and changing that. And actually, um, one other thing that people ask me is, does this is it the same for all your customers? And the answer is yes. So it doesn't matter which customer account we're under. Um, the property name, the address, the other fields are all going to be highlighted. Um, so if you make this change, it'll make it for all the customers, basically. They'll all show that way. Um, in order to set that up, you need to be logged in as the main administrator in Clip. So if you go to System, Passwords, Set Passwords, you can see that this user is a level one user. And that's actually the only user that's allowed to change that that color coding because you don't want your office people going in and changing it and then now it doesn't match what's in your manuals and and the information that you're telling people um, so only one person is allowed to change that and that's the level one user in clip um, so that's one tool that we use in clip lawn care um, make a manual that explains every option on your standard contracts um, so here's an example of a Clip Lawn Care contract. So we've got a couple different options. Uh, just mow it is one that the customer can check off. Um, make it green is another one. These, these notes are notes that I've added, um, but I'll show you the manual that we have um, to go over this. So monthly discount plan if they sign up for aeration over seeding, mowing, and and the uh, six lawn um, treatments, um, then that would be our mow it and make it green package. And then, um, and then we need to set up a couple different jobs, and we need some chemical applications set up too, in order to do that. Um, in order to do that service, so we've got a manual that our employees and Clip Lawn Care can use. Um, it's just called entering contracts. So if a customer has an email address in Clip, check the email invoice and the do not print invoice. So we automatically email uh, invoices to customers um, right when they sign up if we have an email address. Um, if they do not, then um, check on the contract, enter it from there. Basically, this this step some step by step through the process for entering the customer when we receive it back. And then um, if they if they checked off the just mow it information, then open up clip, go to auto charge, set them up as an auto charge customer, um, set up the contract number, go to the jobs tab, add the job, go to job detail, make sure that you set these settings this way, uncheck the times box, fill in the charge per job from the contract, click Calc 2, replace in job. It's every single step that they need to do in order to enter in a contract. And we have it actually in a check checklist form so that our office staff can just go through, print off some of these, and the, just check each thing as they go. Um, yeah, we actually we put it in a um, page protector so you can take a um, dry erase marker and check the boxes as you go along. I worked for Clip Lawn Care for a little while in the office in last year, and um, the one thing that's really valuable about the checklist, an additional thing besides making sure that you don't make errors, is that for training new office assistants. And you can just hand them this binder full of these checklists, and whenever they need to do a task, they can look at it, and you don't have to show them step-by-step -step teaching them over and over and over again how to do the different things in the clip. So that's another thing that saves you time and them time as they're learning the program if you hire anyone new. And it also helps you not make any mistakes as you're entering it in even when you know what you're doing. Right. And I would go even another step and take screenshots and stuff. We'll include that in the resources. Some we, There's actually a blog post that came out recently that definitely applies to this. Um, and we'll we'll stick that in the resources. It'll tell you guys how to uh, do screenshots and add them into Word to make kind of your own operations manuals for um, stuff like entering in a contract. And and 
Club Lawn Care also tends to hire people right in like February, March, April. So we don't have a ton of time to train them. And sometimes they'll be seasonal people too. So we don't have a ton of time to train them and get them up to speed on clip. So um, we basically just have the information for how to do their job, um, what things they need to check and what things they need to do. Um, we don't need somebody that knows like every corner of clip. We just need somebody, you know, that is smart, can use computers, um, can help us with that data entry that we've got in spring. So make it simple so that you can hire those kind of people, those kinds of people, and then um, and then if if they'll if it works with their schedule to make them seasonal, then that works out great for you too. Um, so that goes over the make a manual that explains the options on your standard contracts, and then use the new packages option. So we added something in the clip um, in this latest update that lets you kind of group jobs together and say these jobs are part of a package. So if on your contract you have something that includes like a lawn maintenance, say aeration and overseeding, and um, say maybe a deer spray. <laughs> if, you're, if your area is anything like ours, then you guys probably would need something like that. So I'm going to sell this to the customer as a uh, package. Um, so inside of Clip, I can just say, okay, this is a package. When I add it to a customer, make sure that you add all three of those jobs. So now if, um, actually he's already got some of those jobs. Let me go over to a customer that doesn't have any jobs. Okay, this guy will work. We'll just delete the mowing job. Then if I click on add, I can select a, a package click select, all those are checked off, click copy jobs, boom. We have lawn maintenance, deer spray, and aeration overseeding all ready to go. Just have to change the details that, um, that go with this customer, with this particular contract for that customer. So um, definitely use that function. It's pretty neat. It's something that we added um, last year and then we're able to release in this last update. So um, pretty cool feature, pretty simple, but um, definitely helps cut down on some steps and make it simpler for your office staff to enter in like six jobs at once that are part of your part of a particular package that you're selling to a customer. So, all right, back to PowerPoint. Uh, one other other thing that you can do is use Know It All to document processes within your company. Um, let's let's actually go back a little bit. I want to hit. A poll. So, just I'm just curious. Do you guys use um, the color coding features inside of Clip? Those ones that we went over. Um, so, when I talk to customers, it seems like not too many of you use them, and some of you guys don't even know that those are there. So, but they're very good tools for uh, creating systems inside of your business. So, very useful. All right, so it looks like about 35% of you do, 65% don't. Um, so check it out inside of uh, Clip XE. Um, it's a pretty neat feature. We've got a short manual on it on our website, so you can pull that down if you want a um, little bit more information. It's pretty simple how it works, though. So um, Know It All is actually a tool that we sell, um, but we actually give it away with CPP, so you probably have a license for it if you have Clip XE. Um, go ahead and use it. We we use it all the time inside of uh, Clip Software and Clip Lawn Care, um, or use a tool tool like it. Um, I think Clip Lawn Care also uses Evernote. Um, it's the same type of tool. Um, but basically, what Know It All does is. Uh, lets you store things. So we can say, okay, where's our phone script for the $20 or $30 specials? Um, and then the person in the office can just pull that right up and then use that as their script as they're calling through a list of customers that got those specials with us. Um, so we've also got our contract information in here. How do we, how do we process a contract? Um, so where's our contract letter? Our scripts, cover letter that we use, customers who do not want to agree. 
uh, I know it's in here. <laughs> but it basically gives us one place where we can look for our information, pull it up by keyword, and then update it in one place. I don't know how many of you guys have data that's kind of scattered across, and it's like, okay, what's the process? Where's the procedure manual for adding new customers? And um, somebody is like digging around in their documents on their computer, and other people have other versions, and nobody knows which one is the newest. Um, know it all helps you put all that information in one place. Um, if you don't use know it all, use something like it for sure. Um, so make sure that all of your processes can be found by people. Make sure that everybody has the latest up to date copy. Um, so quick little poll here. How do you guys keep track of company documents and information? <clears throat> um, there, there are a couple different ways. Know-it-all and Evernote are, are similar products. Um, uh, Network Drive is not a great way to do it because then you end up with a bunch of folders. Now you're digging through folders trying to find something. Um, did I did I store it under webinars or did I store it under recorded audio? You know, um, you have a couple different places where you could have put it. Um, so I think there's a real need in our industry just to get our operations better and keep everything kind of unified so that we're all looking and updating the same information. All right. So it looks like we've got 16% say know it all, zero for Evernote, and 47, about half of you guys are just throwing it on a network drive and then trying to make sure that everybody knows that it's there in the same location. Um, and then some of you guys say it's just everywhere, scattered. That's not good. That's a process that you're going to want to fix before you get deep into your season. Um, so those of you in Texas, I guess that's only about two weeks away. So hurry quick. Um, all right, so let's keep moving. Um, oh, one, one other thing that we do with Clip Lawn Care is we do include some other information on our website. We don't want to send out like a 15-page document that says each chemical that we spray, um, you know, how many times we come, what our schedule is. Um, so information like that that's repeated, you may just want to include in a little link on your website. So um, when I pulled this down, I thought it was kind of neat. More information about our applications available at www.cliplawncare.com. So if you want more information, go to this website. You could even have it on a different page that just says, you know, what is our application? It's, you know, a certified guy coming out and doing these applications, usually at these times of year, that kind of thing. Just those little details that customers are going to email you or call you about. Try and be a little preemptive. You don't have to print out 15 pages to do it, but you could just throw that on a website. Um, and then make sure that you store your contracts inside of Clip. So anytime that Clip Lawn Care gets a contract from a customer, we go over to the Correspondence tab, go over to Office, and just hit that Add File Scan button and scan that contract in. And then we've got it stored inside of here. So here's the 2010 contract, unsigned. I guess we, we keep multiple versions of them. So 2012, signed, couple tests. <laughs> this is my test copy, so... Um, but then if, if a customer ever says, no, I didn't say that, then you can pull it up and the information's right there. And things that are customer, that are, that are specific to this customer, documents, contracts, that type of thing, should all be stored underneath this office tab. Things in your company like operations manuals and things like that, you should have in a product like know-it-all or Evernote or something, something like that, some unified place where people can search for it in your company. Um, but anything s specific to a customer should be here. All right. Um, so make sure that you're doing that. We also keep track of the statuses on, on our customer. So when we enter in a contract, we might put something in here too if there's a special note on the contract just to 
or we made contact with the customer and talked to her about it, um, any contact that we make is kept under this CMS tab for that particular customer. So it gives us a good paper trail and a good history of what we're doing with the customer. Very important. Um, yeah, you can also use that for reminders if a customer decides they don't want their contract to be, to be renewed the next year, then you can set a reminder for you in January or whenever to not renew that contract or just anything along those lines. Right. Actually, we have a new feature inside of the update, too, that will help you out with those types of situations. Um, you now have the ability to put a customer on hold after a certain date. So it, say the customer says, but next year I don't want to sign up with you guys. Then you could go over to next year, uh, February, and then just choose the date. And then once that date goes by, that customer will get stuck on hold. So any jobs that you guys do for them. So set them back. So that's another way that you can handle that too. And that's actually new as of uh, this most recent update about two or three weeks ago. So neat, nice feature though, because you may want, a customer may want you to finish out the month and then put them on hold. And you don't want to accidentally be doing extra cuts and not getting paid for it, or extra maintenance and not getting paid. All right. Um, the next thing that I that I mention is limited contracts. You do need to set up the min max and charge over max. A lot of people miss that. Um, and actually, for this part, I think we're going to. Well, okay. These are some general rules. Discounts come from QuickBooks. So if you're trying to set up a discount, set it up in QuickBooks and then import it. If you're using QClipXE, if you're using ClipXE, you can set it up right inside of the discount. Um, so under QuickBooks, that would be system or uh, QuickBook functions and then import data from QuickBooks and item lists. Um, discounts in QuickBooks are actually items. Um, you can set them up that way inside of QuickBooks. And then they'll be listed after you do, do an import, they'll be listed under the setup discounts. Those of you that are using ClipXE and don't connect to QuickBooks, you can pull up discounts and set them up right here. So they can have expiration dates, um, dollars or percentages, um, number of services. They can expire after two or three services or whichever comes first. Um, Clip Lawn Care offers a 10% discount if they'll sign up for a monthly installment with us. And that includes like uh, maintenance and um, chemical application, six-step program, and I think an aeration and overseeding too once during the season. Um, and then, so so that's one of our office procedures is to apply that 10% discount if they signed up for that type of service. So if they check that off on the contract. Uh, chemical applications should be entered under programs and rounds. So if you're setting up uh, chemical applications this year, make sure that you set them up that way. That's, well, that's the way that I would recommend. You can still run them through jobs if you want to, um, but that would be different than a job typically. Uh, jobs that aren't part of contract should be set up as per service. That's important. Make sure that your build types are set up correctly. So if it's included in a, in a contract in an installment, I'll walk you through that in a minute. But if it is, then make sure it's included in contract. If you're charging them each time you do the job, make sure that it's set up as a per service type job. So if the customer already prepaid you, then set it up as a prepay. Otherwise, um, time and materials, if you charge them per hour and material. All right. Okay, so here is a sample CLC contract. We're going to kind of just step through it. So up at the top, we've got that just mow it, and basically this is a reoccurring until they cancel type service. So it's going to continue. It's only the mowing for $28 a visit. So something like that we would set up. Um, actually, let's clear this out first. Um, All right, and with so. Clip Lawn Care, we're pretty, or they're pretty liberal with when they'll let someone cancel if they choose that service. Um, just, I think the policy is two days before they they're scheduled to come in your area if you cancel, and but pretty much just before we're actually 
scheduled to go to your property, we're willing to cancel it for the customer. Right, and so on the sample, different. sorry, go ahead. Um, but every company is different. Right, and on the sample contract that we'll post in the resources, you'll see that there's actually another page that has all those terms and conditions and, you know, make sure you cancel two days ahead. You can't cancel right when the guys are like halfway through mowing your lawn. That won't work for us. Um, but all that stuff is built in into the contract and we make sure that we get a signature um, from the customer that they agree to do that. So um, this is the, again, this is the first one. So this is going to be a just mow it contract. And this is going to be a just mow it contract, so it is reoccurring. Um, so a couple port important things to note here are is <laughs> a couple important things to note are to make sure that times is unchecked. So we have a number filled in there, which is fine. We copied that from the uh, pattern when we added the job. Um, but we don't have times checked off, so. It, we're not going to start charging them over max after a certain number of times. We're just going to charge them the uh, rate that we agreed to per cut, and we're going to charge them each time we go out and do the cut and then bill them, you know, whatever our billing schedule is, monthly. Usually it's a monthly billing schedule. Um, so we make sure to fill out the charge per job for this customer. That's how much they'll get charged when we do the service. Uh, crew number, um, materials and sub costs, if we have that. Um, since this is a Q-Clip version, we need to fill in the item, too. Um, if you pay a salesperson, make sure that the salesman and commission are filled in. Um, one other thing that, that we've added in this most recent update is the ability to make sure that people enter in a certain, uh, certain information. So inside of our company, um, let me, I, sometimes I go a little too fast, so let me walk through that system. If you go to passwords and then set passwords, um, go ahead and double click or click edit user. And then for this user, for Clip, um, when Mr. Clip is logged in, <laughs> we're going to require that he fills out a crew. So he can't leave the crew blank. Um, and this is underneath the jobs tab, so this is job information. So we can require a charge per job to make sure that he's not filling it in with zero and we're not charging our customer. Um, man hour rating, if that's important to you, um, then you can check that off, make sure that it's required. And basically what that means is that when Mr. Clip logs into Clip <laughs> and then um, decides that he doesn't need a crew number, then we're gonna we're not gonna let him save that job until a crew number is filled out, um, and then there'll actually be a pop up. It, you can't have a crew number of zero either, so that's why we're getting that message. But you'll also get a pop up, um, and it'll say, "Hey, make sure that you have you know salesman filled out. Make sure that the commissions rate is filled out if that's needed on those jobs." Um, so that's a very good tool inside of Clip just to help get everybody on the right track, make sure that everybody's entering data in correctly. Um, okay, so back to our per service job. Now, um, Dave, mm -hmm. yep. I think we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty. Let me try and share this poll, and I think that should fix it. And then we'll just go ahead and hide that, and then we should be good to go, so go ahead. All right, okay, thanks, Church. Mm -hmm. Um, so next thing would be go back to the schedule, make sure that we've got our schedule filled out the way that we want it. Um, for Clip Lawn Care, they do at least four days between jobs. Um, and depending on the area, we do different areas on different days and different crews on different days too. So um, we just want to make sure that that information is set up uh, according to which crew and which area this customer is in. Um, see what our next information here is. Um, a monthly discount plan uh, entering in a contract for a customer including lawn apps and jobs. So say this customer signed up for a program as well, then we would want to make sure to enter that in. Uh, 
how big is their lawn? 10,000 square feet. We'll say for this example, what crew? Is it a per service type job or is this included in a, in a monthly installment contract? So we haven't got to the monthly installment contract yet. Um, and then we, we would add the job here. So you need to set it up first under your patterns, fill out as much information as you can that's not specific to customers, and then when we copy it in, um, just change the things that are different for cus per each customer. All right, so this, this monthly discount plan that Clip Lawn Care offers is actually an installment um, plan. So we would need to fill out the contract information as well. And you can see it's seven monthly installments of one thirty-eight and fifty-six cents. And then if they want to, they can check off a insect and grub control. Um, so we'll go add the weekly mowing. We've actually already got that here. Let's set up the contract first. So under financials and then installments, it would be 138. And you can, if you enter it in January and click autofill, it'll fill every month with 138. And then we know we're only doing it for seven months. So March, April, May, June, So probably through September is what that would include, I'm assuming. Um, for billing period, you can leave this blank if you want it to continue forever. If you want to make sure that it stops in at the end of September, then you could enter in the end of September as the, uh, as the end uh, billing period. So if you want it to automatically stop, enter in a date in there. If you just want it to continue um, year to year, then just leave that blank. So that way they're set up for next year to start getting billed again in March. All right, and another neat feature that we've got in here is you can click on create coupons and then which, which coupons we want to print out. So April, March through September. Um, which month we want to start in. So we would start in March, um, print our company name, print zero amounts. If you want to, you can print those and then have this note print out next to them, no charge. So that way they know, okay, that was a free one. Um, there are a couple different formats that you can use as well. There's a pre-printed form or a plain form that prints everything for you. So on um, here, you can give this to your customer. It's similar to that mortgage book that you get <laughs> at the beginning of, your, of the year for your house. You can tear it off and send it in, in with your uh, payment. Um, so that's kind of a neat tool that we've got inside of uh, clip, one that you guys can use for your customers. Um, send that with back, maybe with a confirmation letter saying, hey, thanks for signing up, and here's a coupon book that you can use to keep track of your payments. All right. Now, Dave, with the coupon, how does that work with taxes? With uh, taxes, um, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. But I know that my tax type right now is tax-free. Not sure if this customer is set up as taxable or not. So Maryland is our tax ID. If you'll give me a minute, um, we'll check real quick and see if we can find out. All right, so Maryland, we have 5% on materials. I'm not sure if QuickBooks, another thing to check into would be, um, I'm not sure if QuickBooks might let you print like the same kind of format that could be useful. Yep, so there we go. We've got tax in there too, it looks like. So instead of 138, it's 144.90, and that's at the 5% Maryland tax rate. So for you guys, so you just, it could be different. So, mm -hmm. Right. And you can set up your taxes. Um, and where was that that you set up the taxes? Again? Yeah, that's under uh, system. system, set tax areas. Uh, there it is, set tax areas. And then underneath the customer, you can say that they're part of a certain tax area. That's this tax ID right here. And then if your installments are taxable at the at the material labor or 
D is non-taxable. Um, you can set it to, to whichever rate applies in this case. So. Okay, perfect. Yep. All right, so um, covered that. This is not on hold. Yes, an installment customer. That's important. And then notes, you can have those print out, uh, send to the bills at the end of the month. Um, okay, so now we're ready to set up our jobs. So our job is going to be included in the contract that this customer has. You do still want to fill out the charge, and that would be the amount. Um, I'm sure when you estimate it, you break it out. This much is for mowing. This much is for the applications. That would be the amount that's for mowing. And this is actually important later for efficiency reasons. You want to um, be able to find out how well you're doing for that customer. So make sure that you fill those out even if it's including contract. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. All right, and then under our program. Dave, one other question that we have about, um, one other question we have about taxes from Sarah is that if not all of the services included in the installment have the same tax rate, can you set those up separately? Um, if not all of the services, okay. Um, I think I follow if there are different tax rates. You can use the L and the M for different tax rates. Um, and then you could have lawn maintenance at the labor rate and then maintenance at the other rate. Um, if you're getting into complex stuff, then you need to set it up in QuickBooks and then um, set it up under the item. And then you can assign different services to different items. And QuickBooks will actually take care of all the tax information for you as soon as it it transfers over from CLIP. So if you have a really detailed um, tax situation where you pay like three or four different counties and, it, and each service is different, set that up under your item list in QuickBooks. And then CLIP will pass it over to QuickBooks and QuickBooks will take care of all that for you and even set up like a, a report that tells you how much you owe your vendor so that you can pay them each month, your vendor being the um, city or state that you owe taxes to. So, and we've got a couple tutorials on that, I think, on our site. Yeah, so you can look at those there if you have any more questions. Yeah. Um, and then one other question. Uh, um, let's see. Bob is asking about a, an installment message, and you can set that up when you send each installment out to make it individual for each installment. So, for instance, if you wanted to say this is installment one of five, two of five, uh, no, this this wouldn't be specific to each installment, but typically it's installment for the month of, and then MAR is March. Um, you can change that message if you want to. That may be more what Bob is getting at. If you go to uh, System, and then Set Installment Message, you can say, okay, um, when I process my installments, make them all say, you know, installment for the month of, star m star puts the first three letters of the month that you're processing the installment for. So you could change this wording to something else if you want to. Um, it's up to you <laughs> what you want to say to your customers on that installment line. Okay, so if you just change that right before he sent all his invoices over to QuickBooks or whatever, then that would do it for him. Yep, yep, that's correct. And there's actually another way is if you if you're getting ready to transfer your invoices to QuickBooks, this three dots right here will bring up that same box and you can change it right before you send it. So Perfect. Yep. Helps with uh helps place it I guess in a nicer place. One other thing though that, that may address um his question is you can have additional installments and you can put six more and you could you could um call them different things and have a different description on those other installments. So say I have a, one for mowing and then I have one for chemical applications and I want them to show up as two different charges, then under the description I could have chemical application. This one could be say $100 every month because I go all year round. Um, and then the item that it's attached to in QuickBooks and then the tax code. So same same information here. Um, and you can add as many of those as you need and they'll get processed along with your along with the other installments. So if you have one giant contract that kind of covers everything, um, then set that up here. If you have like maybe three or four different ones, then do them under additional installments. 
and you can have a different description for each one. So hopefully that helps with those questions. <laughs> um, all right, so adding a new program. Um, so we can set up the route sequence, the charge per job, say um, it's 130 per round, um, but it's included in the contract. So then the customer won't actually get charged, but we know for efficiency reasons that that, that work is expected to expected to be billed at 130. Just, just curious, how do you guys do your estimates? If you could just answer this poll that should be popping up right now. So um, do you guys use a formula? That's what we do at Clip Lawn Care, and then we have it um, connect. And there's actually some ways that you can do that in Clip. Um, pretty detailed ways, and we're not actually going to get into those in this. Um, Actually, the, I kind of misspoke there. We do have a formula that we use at Clip Lawn Care, but our main way of doing it is basing it on how long it takes us. We'll do a special first, and then our guys will estimate it based on how long it took them. So that way they can make an educated guess about how many hours or, or minutes it would take a two-man crew and then base our estimate to the, back to the customer off of that number. So it makes our estimating a lot more, a lot more accurate than even having a formula. Because I've been out in the field, and you end up with funny corners that you have to like trim the entire corner around a fence because there's a tree and mulch um, blocking your mower from getting in there, or um, you know there's a hill. So even if you do the square footage and stuff, you're not going to notice that. But if you're out there mowing it, you're gonna you're gonna realize, oh wow, this is gonna take me longer because I have to trim this entire area. I can't get my mower over there. So, all right, it looks like we've got 82% of you guys have a formula or something that you use. 14% um, base it on how long it took, and about 5% of you guys just guess, just kind of make an educated guess on it. Um, so that's how we handle those at Clip Lawn Care. Sometimes we use a formula if it's something that doesn't qualify for like a $20 special. So, All right. Let's go ahead and hide those results and keep going. So um, if we had materials or job or that materials that were associated with this job, you could enter those in at the same time and then um, probably want to auto-update the material cost. Um, let me see here. So uh, we went over the financials and installments here. We went over the programs. Um, Are there any specific questions that you guys have for me? Um, Cherish, if you could grab any questions that people do have and just um, get them ready. And then one other thing that, that we definitely need to cover here is the times feature. So in, in Clip Lawn Care, our season is only about 28 cuts long, so about 28 weeks that we're doing mowing. And then after that, um, we will either put the job on hold or we'll continue doing it and if the customer had a contract with us that only went through September we need to charge them per each cut that we do during the season so in those types of cases you would use this times checkbox and then our minimum number on our contract is 28 and our maximum number of cuts that we'll do is 28 and then our done to dates as we do the job those will go up so once we've done the job twice that'll be two once it gets over that max number, our done to date gets over that max number, right now we're saying we're going to just charge them zero. So if we're using this feature, then we need to make sure that that's set to a number that actually makes sense. If they have a discount and you want to not give them the discount anymore, then you'd leave it at 28 and then put a discount on this. And real quick, how you do a discount, after you've set up a discount, you can click on the Calc 1 button and then just apply that discount. So if you have a 10% off discount, um, then it'll show you, okay, here's your here's your amount minus the 2.8.
and then that will automatically apply that discount for us. Our charge over max is $28, so once we go over that number, we're going to start charging them $28 each time we go out to service that location. Okay, one other important thing is when you're adding a new customer, you have a couple different options, um, but if you add them this way, copy from a pattern, you have this auto route option, which is a really neat option. That will go to map point and ask basically, okay, what's the latitude and longitude of this location? Which customer is it closest to? And it'll automatically assign a route number based on the closest customer. So Patrick Street, this is going to be our office location. D21701. And if you only want to include active customers, I know some people will put their customers on hold for the entire season and then just activate them as the contracts come in. Um, so if you want to um, only include the active customers, you don't do that, and you know that all of your actual customers are active, you can check that box and then click Save. Clip will send that information over to MapPoint, and that's actually what it's doing right now. Come up with the best, um, the closest customer and automatically fill in a route number for you. That would actually be under the defaults for this customer. So it, it figured out that, okay, based on my, on my route sequence numbers and the closest customer, the best route number is going to be that number. So it automatically puts them in the correct route order for me if I have that option checked off. <clears throat> Another way, if, if you aren't sure if you were doing that or not, you can always go back to this property info tab, click on active only, and then it'll show you um, customers that are near, nearby, and you can click select to say, oh, yeah, I'm near there. Um, give me a route number that's near that customer. So there's a lot of different tools inside of Clip that you can use to make your lives easier. And hopefully you guys are using them. One other question that I've got for you guys is, um, are you doing chemical applications? This one is kind of interesting to me because I see I, I've done support in the past and I've seen a lot of numbers for chemical applications and how they come out like dollars per hour and they tend to be really really good um, so if you guys aren't doing that it might be worth going and getting a certification now so that you can start offering that this spring um, and hopefully all of you guys are already doing chemical applications um, inside of your company and making plenty of money off of that and offering another service to your customers so, so that you can make their uh, their lives easier, I guess, outdoors. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and close that poll. Looks like there's about 4% of you guys that don't and 96% of you guys do. So that's good. Most of you guys are, are already using that and upselling to your customers that way. Okay, so the uh, we talked about the defaults function. Another important thing when you're doing your contracts is to make sure that you have your patterns set up correctly ahead of time. So if you do a lot of customers in different areas, then go ahead and set up the information that's the same for those customers ahead of time. So you may not know the address, but um, this is our Adamstown pattern. You do know that the city is going to be Adamstown and that the zip code is almost always 21710. Uh, Some people I've seen put just, just the first three digits because they know that those ones belong to Adamstown. And then, and then your office staff can fill in the rest as they create create those customers. So you could also do installment, an installment pattern. 
set up your installments ahead of time, and then your office staff would just have to change the numbers when they copy that to a new customer. Um, so you could set it up that way as well. And then notes, if you have a note that you're always applying to your customers, go ahead and stick that in the, in the uh, property info under your pattern for your customers. So our jobs, Clip Lawn Care has three different versions of their job. This MMG one is part of our mow it and make it green. If, if an office staff person copies off of this job, it's already got times checked off with a min and a max. And it's already got the um, bill type as including contract and some other information that people would be clicking over and over and over again. But since they're copying from this pattern, they're not going to have to enter that information each time. So the default crew, um, kind of a default schedule. And then we've also got a checkbox. We've just got one day checked, so the staff can uncheck it and then quick check the, the days that this actually belongs to. One other, one other tip um, when you're setting up contracts is if you have language that you use a lot in your notes, um, or just anywhere in Clip, you can set that up as a hotkey inside of Clip. I think that's under Set Function Keys, so System Set Function Keys. Um, each time we do a yearly contract and we get it back signed, we attach it to the customer's account. So um, we can just click F2 and it'll automatically write in there for us yearly contract signed. So that way our office staff isn't isn't entering that in a hundred times a day, yearly contract signed when they're when they're attaching those contracts, and then just include that in your documentation. So um, inside of your manual, say just click F2, it'll say yearly contract signed, and then go on to the next step. And you can change these to whatever you want. Um, I'm not sure what the default is. They might they may not be set to anything when you first install Clip. So So if we wanted to say the contract is signed for this customer, enter it once, click F2 on your keyboard, and wherever you are in Clip, it's, it will write that information. So that's a huge time saver, especially if you're entering in contracts and you want things to be consistent. Um, another important thing and one thing that we're working on at Clip is um, make sure that all of your sources are filled out. When you're entering in new customers, um, it's important to know where those customers came from so you can measure your advertising and know which advertisers to drop and what marketing is really working for you. Um, so make sure that, that your office staff is always entering that out and always asking customers for that information. If you need to edit a list like this, you can click those three dots and remove the old ones and add the new ones for this year for the advertising that you're doing. Just use that delete and add um, options on there. So you may not want to delete something because it's good to have um, previous information um, regarding that. All right, do we have any other questions? Um, yeah, we do have a couple. Uh, let's see here. Penny was asking if she forgot to put in the tax ID when she did the pattern, so she's wondering if there's a global replacement that she can do to put in the tax ID for certain jobs. Um, I think it's actually for all customers. Is that right, Cherish? Would that be for all customers or just certain certain customers or just certain jobs? I think certain jobs. Certain jobs. Okay. Then uh, what you would do is go files, global replacement, and make sure that you do a backup before you do this. Um, click on replace information. Um, if it's the customer tax ID, choose customer. And then if it's the job and you need to make sure that things are taxable, you can double click the tax code on job, click replace with, and then if it's if it's supposed to be non-taxable, it's D, L is labor, M is material. Um, so I'm guessing it would be changing it to taxable as M. 
If you want it for all jobs, you could do um, job number is greater than zero. So any job that has a job number is going to be greater than zero. Um, if it's a specific job, then just job number, double click, click on equals. Um, if it's job one, type in one. So we'll assume that it's job one and then click use this condition. Click perform replacement, and I have a small copy of clip, so it's only five that were replaced. So, um, if you did need to do something in customer, same type of thing, tax tax ID area. Um, click customer, click fields, click tax ID area, replace with. For us, it would be MD for Maryland. That's how we set up our tax information. Uh, choose condition, and if we want everybody, then customer is greater than customer number is greater than zero. So that'll include every single account. So every single account will be greater than zero. Perform replacement, and eleven are done. So that would now, be the procedure. The, when when you're doing the global replacements, you want to be very careful. Definitely yes. make a backup <laughs> before you do it because you can mess up all of your data with just a couple simple clicks. So, and if you have doubts, you can always call support um, or email them and they can help you through whatever you need to do. Yeah, yep, that's true. Um, it's important to make backups, um, especially if you're trying to change a ton of information. Um, so, and that's a very easy process to do. I think we've got some tutorials on our sites that'll walk you through it, but um, if you just go through this, uh, backup and then local backup, um, that'll create one on your local machine and then you can also create it on a flash drive or something if you've got that too. So, Lots of different options. Uh, right. We have another question here. The job type field in, I think it's under the job detail or the, cus yeah, the job detail, um, we're wondering what that field is used for. Sure. Um, Job type, I think, is is mostly used in reports. You can make your own reports, too. So if you want to, you can go custom reports, user-defined list, um, and you can pull, like, use a condition of job type or, um, like, if you wanted to see your, uh, let's say, your charges per week by job type, you could do it that way. Um, I think there is a report under job reports. Um, that goes over that. Um, inside of the resources, we'll go ahead and include a reports manual too, just to make sure that you guys have that. And that will go through all the different reports and clip. And if there's a specific thing that you're looking for, look it up in that, in that reports manual, and then it'll tell you what information it pulls and what information you can use to filter it. So if there's something you're looking, figure out what you're trying to find inside of clip and then kind of work your way backwards as to what you need to enter and what you need to have filled out. So, all right, cool. Well, thanks guys for yeah, sticking be, with us. Mm -hmm. um, I was just gonna say, I'll be sending out an email as soon as the webinar is posted and it'll have a link to all of the resources and everything. Um, that'll probably be Monday or Tuesday of this week. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you guys for sticking with us. I hope that that was useful for you guys. And if you have any other questions for us, feel free to, uh, to shoot us an email, service at clip.com, and we'll see what we can do to help you. Yeah, another thing, if this webinar was a little bit too advanced for you, um, we tend to make our webinars a little bit above the very beginner level, and that's because um, we have clip classes alongside of these. Those happen every Wednesday. It's very, very basic version of, or basic how to work with clip. And this, we're in the middle of the series. It's a four-part series. The next two are the billing class and the reports class. I think those are an hour and a half long. You can email your account manager or support, and they'll be able to send you a link to that. Um, it, it's free for ClipXE users, and it goes over ClipXE, um, and there is a fee for desktop users. And we also just had or posted a Facebook post on our website, and it's about 
getting your mowers ready for spring, so it's appropriate for this time of year. If you didn't winterize them before the winter started, this article will go through everything that you need to do onto your mowers to have them ready to go before the snow melts. And we also have that article on the blog, clip.com. And I think, there we go, right there. And this kind of goes along with this webinar with manual, week, manual making. And you can look at that, and it'll have lots of tips and resources for you that you can see exactly how we have found it to work in the past. There is a survey at the end of this webinar. Is stick around till it closes. And it's just five questions. We'd really appreciate it if you could fill that out for us just so we can improve and get better and better. All right, thank you all for joining us, and thank you for being our customers. We love serving you and helping you be more successful. As always, your success is our business.